G'day, I'm going to show you how to get started with your PicoDev magnetometer and a Raspberry Pi Pico. We'll connect these two together and get some example code working to use the magnetometer just like we would a compass. So we'll be able to read like a, a magnetic heading. We'll also be able to detect the presence of a nearby magnet. And at the end of the tutorial, we'll even do a mini project with a display to make like a graphical compass. Let's get started. To follow along, you'll of course need a Raspberry Pi Pico with the pin soldered facing downwards, a PicoDev expansion board for Raspberry Pi Pico, and a magnetometer. I'm using a pretty long PicoDev cable here just so I can keep my magnetometer away from anything metal. They're quite sensitive and if there's something metal nearby that can disrupt the readings. First plug your Pico into the expansion board with the USB socket at the same end as the two pin battery connector. Connect your PicoDev cable into the socket at the bottom and connect the other end to your magnetometer. Next, connect to your computer with a USB cable. In the article for this tutorial, find the download section and right click each link and select save link as. I'm going to save these to a PicoDev directory in my documents. Instead of saving this last file as compass.py, I'll save it as main.py. We're going to be using Thonny to program our Pico today. If you haven't done that before, check out our guide for getting started. Open up Thonny, connect to your Pico, and navigate to where you saved those three files we just downloaded. Click the first, hold down Shift, and click the last, then right click and upload to your Pico. If we open up the main file stored on the Pico, we can see that this is a compass example. We start by importing the magnetometer module, and we also import a sleep function. We initialize the magnetometer and call that compass. And we're initializing here with a range of 800 microtesla. Magnetic field strength is measured in Tesla in the SI units, and this is 800 microtesla. We're going to calibrate the compass, and then we're going to take a heading and print that heading. Run the script with control D, and we get some calibration instructions. I'm going to very slowly rotate the magnetometer, keeping it flat against the table. The aim here is to keep a slow and steady rotation and cover at least one full revolution. You can see, you'll see that progress bar filling up and anytime there's some event that needs to be logged, the progress bar will reset. But as I just keep turning that around in a slow circle, we ought to have a calibrated compass. Now that the compass is calibrated, I'm getting a heading printed out into the shell. That heading is as if this device were like a compass. So whichever way the top of the board is pointing, that's where we're going to be taking our reading. So if I see if I can find north, here we go, that's zero degrees. So that's going to be magnetic north. Now here I have a real magnetic compass and I've taped a piece of paper down on the desk. So that when I find north with this compass, I can rule a line and that should be north, magnetic north. Now if I bring my magnetometer back into the picture and align it with that line, we can verify that the magnetometer is also pointing in magnetic north. How good's that? So if we rotate 90 degrees clockwise, and hold that to the line, we're now facing east with our compass and the shell is printing 90 degrees as well. And likewise, if I go, if I go to a full 180 degrees, we, we should now be facing south, which is 180 degrees. And so just like that, we have a working magnetic compass. Now a magnetic heading is not true north. Just about everywhere on the globe, the magnetic, the direction of magnetic north is offset a little bit from, from true north, and this is called magnetic declination. Here, if I bring my phone into the picture, I'm running a compass application. And you can see I've aligned my phone with the line, but I'm reading about 12 degrees, and that's because my phone is looking for true heading. If I select magnetic heading, we're basically facing magnetic north now. So where I am in Newcastle, Australia, there's actually a 12 degree difference between magnetic north and true north. There's actually a setting you can apply to the compass to account for this declination. If I uncomment this line, here we're setting the declination to 12.3, and I found this using an online tool. 
I'm going to comment out calibrate because I don't need to run that again once I've calibrated. And now when I run the script and align with magnetic north, I get a reading of around 12 degrees. And to actually point to true north, I would have to rotate anti-clockwise by about 12 degrees. So now you can see the differences between magnetic north and true north. After calibrating your magnetometer, you may have noticed an extra file appear on your Raspberry Pi Pico. This is the calibration data that we collected during calibration. This file is read every time you initialize the magnetometer, if it's present. If this file isn't present, you'll just get a warning that we're running uncalibrated. By saving this data in this file, it means we don't need to calibrate every time we run our script. You might want to recalibrate if your magnetometer is ever nearby a permanent magnet. Let's move along to the next example. Return to the article and find example two for detecting a magnet. Highlight and copy all of that code and we'll paste it into main.py on our Pico. The setup here is pretty similar. We do the same imports. This time we're setting the range to the maximum range, 3000 microteslas, because we're gonna be working with some strong magnets. There's a threshold programmed and this script will just read the magnetic field strength, print that strength, and then decide, is the magnetic field strong or not? If I run the script with control R, we can see the magnetic field strength being printed in microteslas. And if I bring my magnet closer and closer, we'll see that strength go up. Once we cross the threshold, we get the message strong magnet. As a quick remix, I'm going to comment out that strong magnet print and we'll make this run every 100 milliseconds so that we can open the plotter and view a graph of magnetic field strength. I'll rerun the script. And now as I move that magnet closer and farther away, you can see the, the field of influence of the magnet only begins to pick up about here. And if I spin the magnet around, that will also change the field strength as well. That's quite interesting. So you could use a program like this for detecting the presence or lack of presence of a magnet and have your program do something depending on whether there's a magnet nearby. Security systems work like this to detect whether a window or a door is open or closed. Return to the article for the tutorial and copy the raw data example into your main script. This is just going to read the raw magnetic field strength in each of the X, Y, and Z axes. So the numbers printing up the shell are the magnetic field strengths in micro Tesla. And if we open up the plotter, we can have a bit of a play with this magnet. We can see as I move the magnet closer and farther away, it makes sense that the axes would change. Here, the magnetic field lines are coming out of the magnet and mostly going down through the Z axis. So if I rotate the magnet onto its side, we should be able to affect that blue line a lot. Okay, so now the blue line has fallen pretty close to zero and that's because all the field lines are going around in this axis. There's very, very little magnetic flux going through the Z axis, which is going vertically through the sensor. That also means that if I spin the magnet around, X and Y are gonna change a lot, but Z is decoupled from that because again, I'm spinning the magnet around this way. There's no magnetic lines going through the Z axis. You might want to use this raw data if you want to do your own signal processing. And if you really, really want to, you can include the raw argument, raw equals true. And that will just print, rather than units of micro Tesla, this will just print the raw register values coming straight out of the sensor. And now for a fun little project, I've mounted everything onto a Picadev platform to keep it nice and stable. And I've brought in a Picadev OLED module, which is a small display. This project is very similar to the first compass example we saw, except now I'm drawing a graphical compass needle on the display. So as I pick this platform up and turn it in place, we can see the needle is always pointing in the north direction. And there's even a heading in degrees printed on the screen as well. If you'd like to recreate this project, you can find the code at the bottom of the article. It's very simple to the first compass example, the major difference is this new function that I've called draw compass. This is basically taking the heading, setting the length of our compass needle, and then converting that angle and length into an X and Y coordinate to draw the end of our compass needle from the center. 
So our compass needle is drawn as a line from the center of the display, and it's drawn to the point x, y that we just calculated from the length and angle. And so with just a little bit of extra code and an extra module, we've really leveled up what we can do with this magnetometer. If you make something cool from this starter project, or if you just have some questions, let us know in a comment at the bottom of this article. We're full-time makers and happy to help. Until next time, catch you later.